something of this and then you don't stop your elbow should be in locked position this is how locked okay. my elbows are right until and you, she don't wake up you, you she's, get she's responding yeah you don't even you get the response put your mouth over the patient and then i have what okay and then you should this is actually very a demanding procedure so you can give as much as 100 compressions per minute 100 per minute yes so well. please if you're watching this video make sure you share this video share the video guys we're doing this because of the recent occurrence we all know with our um, legendary late junior pope so people need to know about these things that's why he's here Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, this is an example of stuff that happened in the pool. Now, how do you save people like this? That's why we have like a volunteer here, Mr. Clement from Star Hive Nigeria. Star Hive Nigeria. So, Mr. Clement, when somebody don't drown or somebody gets issues like that for water, how do we go about it? That's why you're here. Okay. All right. So basically, um, here to demonstrate how we do what we call CPR. CPR. Now, CPR is called um, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Now, in a layman's term, cardio means, you know, the heart, pulmonary means the lung, and then to resuscitate means to bring something back. So we are trying to clear the airway to allow, you know, circulation within the lungs and the heart to pump us um, as normal as it can be. So now in this case, um, I'm going to be using simple mnemonics, right? So always remember what we call doctors A, B, C, D, right? D, R, S, that's doctors, then A, B, C, D. Now each of them stands for something. Now the first thing you need to consider before giving a CPR is the first, which is the D, is called danger. So you first have to ascertain the environment if it is safe enough for you to carry out the process. You know, you don't want to endanger yourself or the person you are trying to rescue. So when you're sure that there's no harm or there are no chemical fumes or maybe like any other attack coming around, you can now proceed. So that's the first D, right? Now, the, the next um, is the, the R, we check for um, respiration or response, the person's response. You know? okay. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to access if the person is actually responding, right? So for persons who are trained, there's a way to you know, find it out. You just have to place your hand just a few inches below the neck. Where? A few inches below the neck. We call it a um, carotid pulse. To check responsiveness right and then you can ask the person are you all right like you can you know try to show the, the person, person is not moving now that is when you know that you can proceed because okay. if i say are you all right? the person says yes 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 okay I can still, like leave the person and then you know leave the place okay. rather than having to wait them on the cpr and cpr is more like one of the um last stage emergency um procedures you don't just carry that on people like that because you want to do it it has to be because they really need it because there are certain risks also as to do with this procedure which you get to find out during this um training process now the next one which i think the diver did justice to doing the rescue process was yes. shouting sending for help yeah now it's important to send for help because you do not have everything it takes to rescue this person clinical wise okay so it's yeah. important that you contact you shout for that person to come or you can call and maybe an ambulance or maybe any emergency medical team that's around okay so we've completed the three the first two letters this is d r s which is doctors right so the first is um, to check for danger, the second to check for uh, the person's responsiveness, Response. and then send for help, right? Now, we're going to look at the, the next one, which is um, the first, which is A, B, C, D. The first A is um, check for the um, person's the airway, right? Yeah. Now, in this case, you want to check if the person is breathing well. So, what you need to do is... Is it the mouth to mouth you want to do? No, 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 it's not. Because no, no. <laughs> okay. no, that will be the main. Uh, no. So please, if you're watching this video, make sure you share this video. Share the video, guys. We're doing this because of the recent occurrence we all know with our um, legendary late Junior Pope. So people need to know about these things. That's why he's here. So we never reach mouth to mouth. Mm, so you, okay. check, you check for the airways. Now, it's also important that at this stage, if the person is putting on tight things, like let's say the person got into the pool with a tie. Yeah, okay. You know, so you just have to use it to ensure. And then the next, which is the B, you should check for breathing, right? You want to be sure that the person is breathing, at least you can hear some. By either, you need to go close, listen to the person's breathing sound, right? Okay. Then you to get to know if um, the person is breathing normal, the person oh, is breathing okay. abnormal. Now the next, um, which is the C, is the, um, the compression proper. Okay. So now, um, this is for an adult, right? So yeah. for, for children, emergency is quite different, which I'll get to explain at the end of the, okay. the, towards yeah. the, end of the video. Okay. So now, what you do is, 
you okay so let's assume that i'll try to especially the person in there and it's always difficult for me carrying this out of women because you know you guys are the ones that can actually look at their chest so basically you're gonna place your hand uh, this no, way please, please. this is how you place your hand this other way then how this way okay but well, i come close to me they see the hand so then this you can you know your elbows should be in locked position this is how locked okay. my elbows are right okay and then you should this is actually very a demanding procedure so you can give as much as 100 compressions per minute 100 per minute yes as wow. much as wow. 100 compressions per minute and like then, like this it should be two compressions per second right so wow. if you are doing twice we have 60 seconds so that means that's like 120. wow right so it's very that's why i asked to send for help because someone you get exhausted so someone has to take over yes i'm here definitely yeah. so so now you press see your hand hard and fast now by hard i mean um you push as much as two to five centimeters deep wow yes so it's really a tedious process so you press really hard and then fast means as much as two um, compressions per you know um second right so just something of this and then you don't stop until you, you don't wake up you, you she's, get it's responding yeah you don't want to get the response now um after 30 seconds, right, um, though I, I won't be doing this, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a pipe, um, there's a structure we usually use, we just place it over the mouth, right? But before we do that, we first of all try to open the mouth and then clear the airways, right? Okay. Try to, like, because sometimes this person's tongue can be blocking, you know, so you yeah. just open, though I'll not be doing it here. Okay. Just clear the airways and then place the marks over. So after you've had like 30 compressions, right, you can now give two breaths. So it's more like 30 compressions, 2 breaths, 30 compressions and 2 breaths. So that's more like a formula. 2 breaths, like, kind of, you know. Mouth to mouth. Yes, that's the mouth. And how you are giving now? How are you telling us? I am going to talk now. I am going to talk now. I will do it. Just show us a sample of them. It's the mouth to mouth. It's the mouth to mouth. Now you go. So it's not like you are doing. Uh -huh. Yeah, so what I was seeing, no, I said, normally there's supposed to be a max. If I had a max over oh. her face. Okay. They don't do it straight mouth to mouth. No, no for kind of demonstration. Of, um, the certain risks, as you say, that it's, it's risky. You don't know people can have some kind of okay. So even if you're doing it real, you need to cover some. If there's a max around, then if there's no max now, no let's max, say like just, like in a river, something like this happens. If there's no max, mm -hmm. there's no max. You just have to continue your compression without the breath. It's possible, right? Ah. Just continue. Yes, it's very possible. Just continue your compressions. If you can't give, and this mouth to mouth is for trained people. It's for trained professionals, yeah. So a random person should not just you know wake up. Oh, the hell! Any question? Any random person, no, just wake up, come to punch his mouth. What are they here? They are trained enough, right? But I think this is not something that any random person should just know. Everybody. What I mean, I don't mean you have to be a doctor. At least you have to have some one called BLS training, like physical life support training. So you have that training to be able to do. Maybe everybody supposed to get uh, this thing. Okay, but just tell us how to do them, even if you don't do them. Okay, so yes, just, uh -huh. it's just difficult. Just put open your mouth, mouth. Open mouth mm -hmm. and then put your mouth over the patient and then... Uh -huh. What the uh hell? -huh. When, when you open the mouth, they pop air. Yes. Okay. As if they are pumping air into a balloon. Okay. Okay. Now, normally, you're supposed to see a response. You see, I mean, when you see a response on this chest. When you're yes. to show that the person yes. is responding. Yeah, yeah. Like, that you, you're doing a breathing thing well. Mm -hmm. So that the air is entering. It's entering. It's just like you're your body. You know, the lungs are like balloons. Mm -hmm. So it's air to the wind. It's supposed to rise. Yeah, so that's more like you put it in the right thing, actually. Okay. So when you're done, you continue with, you know, your compressions, right? Now, um, the next step, which um, we should take in, is um, what we call an AED. Now, an AED is um, an automatic external defibrillator. What it does is like, because remember I told you guys that first of all try and shout for help. Yes. Now it is expected that the response in that mm. comes with an AED. And what that AED does they apply shock to the person's you know, to, to be like they want the person's cardiac with the Which shock? Where do we get it? It's a machine. Okay. So it's a machine, right? So it's able to apply shock to the person's the way the person will know mm. uh, the person's heart activity. Because this is not just about air, it's about the heart as well. So the heart is not sending signals, the person is close to dying. Yes. So that's basically we have the DRS, the doctors, the ABC. So, uh, but what about oxygen? The oxygen coming from this? Well, you don't have oxygen, right? You don't have oxygen, so it's going to depend on the medical team that's coming. Okay, we do this while you wait for the medical team. So it's yeah. very important that you call for help immediately, immediately while you're doing this. Yes. And then um, this issue of you know, like 
um, I don't, I wasn't there when yeah. it happened, but I think I heard some things about you know, looking into these and looking into that. Mm. Yes. I think it's very important that the first point of call for emergencies is the hospital system. You know, it's funny that persons have lost hope or they've lost confidence in them. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's very yes. important because taking the person to the church, I, I don't know, I'm yes, not against anyone, yes. but then I think it's the right thing to do medically. So send for help and try to be um, this CPL. And then I, I just want to make a, a call on maybe like the government or maybe like the national orientation agency that these are things that should be you know part of compulsory curriculum. Even if let's say students are not gonna to get to write this in the exam, but they should have this. I think digital life support is something that everybody should learn. So whatever skills like driving, like swimming, yes. is something that we should learn as well. Because if you can swim and you're in a drowning situation, you are like a it's not to help. Exactly. You are only one step ahead of swimming yourself. So. And the government should also help our hospitals uh, because yes. sometimes the situations no, are uh, like no, we know they know the fit carry person because the hospital system you know they work. So government should help us. Private two costs. Even for Calabar, you know, it's you know, it's so, so 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 that's all for Yeah, so this claim this person has not actually drowned. No, we not just, to yeah, so and nobody was handling this process. <laughs> yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. much. Smell it. But I'll do the mouth to mouth for, for record people. Share this video <laughs> I'll make this video go by. So that's just wow. it. Thank you.